you know, what, what we want to do is go and observe that we do not have any domains validated currently. So if I go to company, set up company, we go to the security tab. Um, I go down, scroll down to email sender domains. I don't have any setup. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to send an email with my custom domain to a Gmail account and uh, check to see how that email is coming through. And we're going to send it to a Gmail account here, and we're going to send it from a custom domain that I own. Okay, so that email is sent. So here's the email that I that was received. As you can see, the uh, from user is from this uh, support user that uh, was inputted in the name field. The invoice, you can see that the reply to address or the address that Lewis put in the name or in the email field is listed here. But you'll also notice that it says via bounces.intact.com. Um, and this is shown in the headers of the email as well. So we'll see that the reply to is the email address that you put in the user interface. However, there's a return path um, field right here that shows where the email actually came from. So it comes from bounces.intact.com. As you can see, this message fails DMARC, but because Sun Daisy Corner doesn't have a, a DMARC policy set to quarantine or reject, the recipient email system is going to accept this email. Um, the main issue that this would cause uh, when using a custom domain is when you have a DMARC policy set to quarantine or reject. If you have a DMARC policy set to quarantine or reject, the recipient is unlikely to get this message um, if you were going to send it with an unvalidated domain in Sage Intact. So in order to do a DMARC check, you just copy your custom domain and paste it in this DMARC checker here. I'm using a third party called MX Toolbox. We'll do a DMARC lookup. And this particular domain doesn't have a DMARC record published. Um, in, in domains that do have a DMARC record published, you will see three policies, one set to, you'll see one of three policies, valid policies. One is called none, one is called quarantine, and one is called reject. And the owner of the domain can decide on which policy they want to have. So if a recipient sees that DMARC fails for any reason, they're going to follow the policy that you publish on your domain. Let's go through the process and authenticate our domain. So if we go to company, set up company, the first thing you're going to want to do when you get to the screen is click on edit, then go to the security tab, then scroll down to email sender domain settings, and we're going to add our domain here, sundaisycorner.com, and then we'll authenticate the domain. So what this is going to do is generate a series of entries for us that we need to go and then update into our DNS system. So here's our here's our entries. So we want to what we want to do is take these CNAME entries and these TXT entries and add them into our DNS. So this is just the first step. The domain, if you look at the domain, it's marked as authenticated. You, This is just step one. Uh, so we have we have another step, and this is where it's going to require IT team or whoever manages your DNS on this domain. So let's go look at these domain entries here. Every DNS management system is different. This is GoDaddy's. Manage uh, the DNS here. I could start adding the DNS entries. All right, so now what I've done is I've saved all of these, I've entered all of these records that match here, my DNS entries. I have three CNAME and three TXT records, and they match exactly with, with what's in intact right now. And I'm gonna save them. Okay, there we go. Our DNS is now successfully saved. So first, what you, in order to do this lookup, you want to gather the first column of uh, CNAME keys. Um, and you're going to do a one-by-one -one check using a CNAME lookup tool. Um, in this case, we're using MX Toolbox. And if you paste the CNAME record key and do a lookup on it, it should resolve to the value that you just entered. So this one is published. Um, and you can see that it resolves to this canonical 
canonical name, which is the value that's in the DNS table. So um, let me gather the second one um, that Lewis that's in the DNS table. Sorry, I'm on. So here, so this one was resolved as well. And then we'll gather the third one from here. So all of these, both uh, these three records are, are resolved correctly. Um, you might want to double check and make sure that there's no typos. Um, if you copy and paste, that limits the risk of any typos. But if you're going to manually type these in, it's best to, to compare these values with the ones in your intact instance to make sure that they're accurate. So now we want to do a TXT record lookup to make sure that those email sender keys or ESK um, values are entered correctly. So using MX Toolbox, uh, they have a TXT um, lookup option, option, which is here. Um, so if you paste the DNS key from the left-hand side of the column, it should resolve to the value. So as you can see, there's that intact ESK value that we inputted in the DNS. We can also see the SPF record that we inputted it on the DNS. And we're also going to do, um, I skipped a lookup here using the mail verify so that the ESK, intact ESK value is also published correctly here. Um, so we know we validated on NMX Toolbox that all the DNS records are published um, correctly. Yep, so, so now that we've went through that process, we've added the keys, we've validated that they're in there, in the DNS using the NX Toolbox lookup. So that's basically gives us the green light to go ahead and validate this domain. So again, company, setup company, security tab, I'm already, and, and now you need to press edit again. If you scroll and then scrolled it, click on security, scroll down to your email center domain settings, drill into sundaisycorner.com, validate the domain. The domain is now validated. It says email system, email delivery system validated, then you're good. You can close out of that. It may still say authenticated here, but if you go and refresh it, go back to this page, it says validated. So we're essentially good now. So now what I'll do is I'll send another email. And one thing to note too is that um, the propagation time or the time that it takes to publish those records to the internet varies depending on the DNS service being used. So GoDaddy um, it was pretty instantaneous when, when Lewis published those records. Some systems, they'll, they won't publish them till about 30 minutes or sometimes even up to an hour. We have a disclaimer that says up to 72 hours. However, we'd expect them to be published uh, a lot sooner before 72 hours. Uh, usually it's within one or two hours at most. We have another email that came in. So here's the inbox. We just got the message. As you can see, that support at Sundaisy Corner is listed as the from address or the um, reply to address, and there's no longer a via uh, bounces.intact.com address here. If we show the uh, message headers, you'll see that DMARC now passes. And the reason DMARC passes is because the header from domain, which is info at Sundaisy Corner, which is the reply to, this domain is a match with the return path domain, which is now this subdomain. So this counts as a match, and that match will in turn ensure that DMARC passes. And it's important to note as well that this return path domain is the DNS key one in your DNS table. So moving forward, the messages are going to be sent from this DNS key one uh, that's listed in your DNS table and intact. 